if you want to improve your user interviews, stay tuned. I'm about to share you some secrets. Don't tell anyone. I'm telling you only for you. Steve Jobs said, the broader one understanding of the human experience, the better design we will have. At Red, we do user interviews as a routine. Through time, we learned a lot, like a lot, a lot. Okay, what is working, what isn't working. And in this video, I am going to share with you some of our secrets and also the templates we use. Preparation. You need to understand the goal of the interview session. Why are you doing this? What is it that you want to find out? It's really helpful to have a script that you can look at, especially if you're not a seasoned researcher. The script should be relatively simple and short. In general, we try to keep the interview less than an hour, not to exhaust your interviewee, nor yourself. We like to work in teams of two people. One is interviewing and the other one is taking notes. This way, the interviewer is concentrated in listening and the note taker is focused on framing the interview and the insights. We use a predefined template to capture our feedback in a standard way. I will put a link to it in the comments below. We prepare a column for each interviewee and the row for each subject we want to address. We capture positive feedback with green notes and negative in red. Suggestions and ideas are captured in yellow. This gives us a general overview on what worked and what didn't work. Make sure to leave a buffer between each interview so you can have a few minutes to capture your insights while it's all fresh in your head. It's a good practice to capture the user reaction from a prototype, a product, or any stimuli when possible, especially with digital products, where it's easy to create one. In many cases, the most effective user interviews are when you are able to show the user something they can react to. This way, you're capturing not only feedback or open questions, but also the authentic reaction to your ideas. It can be a real-looking prototype, like we do in the design sprint, or a part of your design if you're researching a specific flow. It's a great conversation starter and always an eye-opener. Make them feel comfortable. The following advice might sound like Captain Obvious, but it's super important for the success of the interview. You need to make sure your participants are feeling comfortable. You need to earn their trust. I always start by introducing myself and I make sure to thank them for helping me in my research and for sharing with me their time and thoughts. It's your responsibility to relieve any stress elements from this session. I start with a small talk. I like to ask them about the weather. Many of our interviewees live in different places around the globe, so it's also kind of nice to have a glimpse into another location. Then I move into general questions about their background. Not too intrusive, but enough to put them in the context of the interview subject matter. People love talking about themselves. It eases the atmosphere and their defense mechanisms. Especially if it's a remote interview, you need to keep in mind that this person was doing something completely different just a minute ago. You know, like working, spending time with their family, jogging. They didn't have the time to do this mental switch from what they just did to this interview with you. It's on you to help them do this shift, to open a mental door and let them in easily. Another thing that we do at Red is we make sure they understand that we're not testing them. There is no right or wrong here and they should freely express their mind. Keep track of time. Keeping track of time is important. It sends a message that you respect their time the importance of the interviewee, and also the following interviewees. Whether it's an in-person interview or a remote one, you should always be there before your interviewee. Everything should be ready for the interview. When you start the interview, make sure you have enough time for all the important parts you want feedback on, and that you on the right track. You can use the script for that, actually. Ask open-ended questions. Why ask open-ended questions? Hmm. Why, why, why? Why ask open-ended questions? Well, the short answer is that it makes people answer more deeply. It's a great way to get deeper and interesting insights. When you ask open-ended questions, it helps people to think more broadly and give a free-form answer. In general, in this kind of research, you should avoid yes or no questions because 
You want your participants to open up and share deeper thoughts and experiences so you can have better insights. Close-ended questions. Have the place in research as well. Nielsen Norman Group suggests to use close-ended questions in the following cases. When performing quantitative usability studies or in service where you expect many respondents, when collecting data that must be measured carefully over time, or after you have done enough qualitative research that you have excellent multiple choice questions that cover most of the cases. Don't lead the witness. When you ask leading questions, you influence people with the way they answer the questions and you bias the research. Most of us tend to give pleasing answers and that's not what we want in an interview. When we ask leading questions, we put a lot of information into the mind of our interviewee. For example, if I'll ask my interviewee, would you like this button to be yellow or green? This is a very, very leading question because we frame the answer inside the question. What if both colors are bad choices? Or if I'll ask them, if I'll add this feature, would you pay for this product? That's a leading question since people want to be nice, they'll tell you the answer you want to hear. You need to be cautious with the way you frame the questions. Leading questions might bias your interviewee, and that's not what you're after. In a lecture on the laws of evidence, the famous lawyer Samuel Leibowitz held up a pack of camel cigarettes and asked his audience, is the man riding the camel or holding the halter and leading him? Answers were divided, but no one person in two separate audiences answered that there is no man in the picture on the package. Sometimes silence is a bliss. Humans don't like silences. It makes us feel awkward. As social beings, we like to talk and communicate with each other. It makes us feel connected. You need to know when to pull this silent thing. It's not always easy, but it can be highly effective. In fact, shutting up and listening is one of the most important skills a researcher can have. A good example of when to apply silences is when you show a prototype to a user, then wait and let them talk. Keep eye contact with them, smile, but do not talk or try to feel their sentences. It'll probably take them only a few seconds to start saying stuff and share their thoughts and ideas. Well, these are our top tips, but I want you to write to me about your techniques. What works for you? What doesn't work for you? Have you got any questions about this subject? Anything you would like us to talk about in our next videos? Please send us your ideas and requests. Let us know what you would like us to talk about in our next videos.